Right. Mm -hmm. So money. Well, what kind of conversation are we having about money? What kind of conversation do we want to have about it? I'm, I'm assuming that throughout the duration of the call, we'll probably talk about what money is. We'll probably talk about some problems with money, maybe some stories about how to make money, how to create money. Also, why you're creating money. There's a, there's a whole... Oh, it's so, so this is a really broad and wide topic for, for like 600 years, um, uh, or how how long has it been going on? <laughs> when did they? When did? Oh, gold when, coins. Yeah, yeah, right from the very Sumeria. beginning of, of the whole thing. But but um, what I'd like to do, maybe just throw a little bit of a frame around it from the perspective of let's actually define the word happiness first. Um, like, what makes you happy? Because if we can. If we can begin to define things based off of the value that they have to us individually and us collectively, then we can start to change the definition of, of what money is because essentially money becomes a means by which to make myself happy for most people. The problem is this happy is never defined. And so if you have, I want a million dollars of what? Money is a measurement. It's supposed to be a measurement of exchange of time, value, resources, intellect, all these different things that kind of accumulate. That's what it's supposed to be, but that's not what it is anymore. What money is today in our grand world is a representation of how much power you have over someone else. The distance between what we say we want and the results of our actions and efforts has become farther and farther and farther apart. Like. If, if, if we had our actions were directly related to that thing that we really wanted as opposed to that middle step of get the money so that I can get that thing that I wanted, yep. which ends up being a loop. If our actions were more directly in, in line with the real thing that we want, we bridge that gap closer and closer and closer and we can use that, that, that thing called money as simply a medium of exchange, a measurement of look, I, I want to make you happy and I don't have the thing that you're excited about, whether it's a violin or a piano or, 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 or whatever it is, well then I can direct some of my effort, energy and resources over to this person who does have that, who then right. can bring that back around. That, that The original intention behind the facilitation of, of exchange. So the closer we get that exchange, the less middleman, the more mm -hmm. fulfilled everyone is. Yeah. Definitely. What what I've been hearing a lot is money as an obstacle. Right. <clears throat> what a few people seem to be talking about is that um, money is devaluing their experience of life. It's it's hindering the experience. And before you talked about after our basic necessities, what you know what makes us happy? What do we need? And so for me, that's growth, and mm -hmm. growth often happens through our experiences with other people. But money doesn't have to be an obstacle. It's all just a point of view. I mean, if you think about how um, businesses that are huge multi-million dollar businesses got started, they just kept moving even though they had no money at all. And then all of a sudden, the money appeared because someone saw that they were already doing what they were passionate about. So yeah. maybe we could actually talk about that a little bit as far as, you know, what's the what's that magic that makes money appear, right? Because, mm. you know, what what is that? Suddenly you don't have any and then, wow, things change. And I don't know um, uh, if everyone's had an experience or not in their life where they were completely broke and then and then very shortly after that, boom, everything flipped around and they were doing really well. Now, they may have, may have been broke again later, but, but that, that experience of, you know, wow, the universe really did take care of me uh, at some point, yep. right? Um, has everybody you, had that experience? absolutely isn't to say that, right? What's that? I, I'm moving my words. I'm not sure if, if you guys can hear me or not. I, I, I guess you can now. It, it's absolutely amazing that you say that because uh, just sitting here and listening to everything and, and just going down that, that path right there, I can think of back when I was uh, selling life insurance for a living. And I don't know if any of other of you have, have sold life insurance for living or not, or, or if any of you have seen Wolf of Wall Street uh, or, or any of those types of movies like Boiler Room, but it is really a, a money-driven, material-driven uh, culture that literally you, you become, right? And it's so funny because there I am, I'm projecting this image of, of abundance and 
and wealth and happiness. And if you just work 75 hours a week, darn it, you're going to make it. And meanwhile, I'm <laughs> broker than broke because I'm floating the expenses for the entire office because none, none of my other managers that are working with me have money for anything. And I'm three months behind on my own mortgage payment, right? But that's the, 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 the dream that I'm selling. And it's so funny because um, it was literally after I, um, you know, was faced with the choice of, of A, losing my family or B, uh, losing the job um, that I made the decision. It was a hard one because it's all I'd ever known for the last five years in terms of professionally and it was the only option for me because I was on this, this path of, of financial independence in, in 10 years and whatever. I don't even have to go into it, but you get the picture, right? And after that, you know, decompress and then all of a sudden things started to come into alignment for me. Um, uh, my brother ended up going into fostering. He needed help with that. I needed a flexible schedule because my wife was going back to work and all these other sorts of things that we were able to negotiate and work out. And then all of a sudden, I have an abundance of free time. I have time to spend with my family and our financial situation is the healthiest it's been in probably 10 years. Mm -hmm. And it was just this entire transition and reprioritization that was happening, you know, without even really knowing it, just kind of going through this whole pile of garbage, uh, hot garbage, if you will, to get to a point where you gain an appreciation for the things that are important, and then things, the resistance was gone, man, like, it, it, yep. all of you, it, the resistance was absolutely gone, and, you know, yeah, we'll have tight months or whatever, but, you know, you, you think it, you know, amped up or whatnot, and you're sitting there and you're thinking, it's like, man, you know what? Even if this month is not, this is a million, hundred, trillion times better than it was before. And I, I, I now have time to take stock and, you know, appreciate uh, the little nuances that, that happen on, on a daily basis, you know. And I have time to do everything that I want to do, it, you know, and it, it, it's absolutely awesome. So... Um, I don't know if that flows with what we're talking about or not, but uh, I just okay, felt compelled. It does. To share. I mean, yeah, it, it was it was it was actually really fun to listen to you because I, I I feel the 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 vibe in your in your voice as you were talking about it. Just a very pleasant experience of yeah, that's exactly what I'm talking about. That that when you're in the flow of something that has that it's got your motion, it's got natural motion, it's got motion to it. The universe supports everything in motion. It's it's just kind of the way it works, right? When when it's like a million things, how do I want to say this? Um, imagine a forest, right? And something happens in the forest. Everything that's in motion, a million things go to it. Even if it's something that, that falls off of a, a tree, it's still in motion, and all of those bugs come to eat that thing. The universe supports something in motion. So if you are in motion, and if you... Um, uh, move in the motion of the universe, then you have an accelerated motion effect. That's really, in a way, what you were describing from a, an energetic perspective. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, one of my focuses that's been changing this the last couple of weeks that is probably aligned with this is I started trying to happen to my life instead of let my life, um, yeah. instead of just having life happen to me or waiting for life to happen to me. You know, I was I was broke recently, and then. You know, we started putting forth my husband and I all this motion moving forward and just really active. And we're like, no, we're going to happen to this. We're tired of waiting for something good to happen. And yeah. I went from broke to now I have money in my hand. It was so awesome to go shopping and actually have money to buy food. I mean, it's just a big deal, you know? So I can really relate to the financial planning um, insurance thing. Uh, I felt like I was. Uh, I did that for a few years, and um, I felt that I was, um, like you said, um, having to present something that I wasn't, and I ended up feeling not very genuine about it. And I think that that was something that um, was uh, a really important value for me to be able to feel um, genuine about what I was exchanging in the world. Mm. I ended up getting out of it. Well, that's that's actually a struggle that um, that I've had in my life as well. Um, I've made plenty of money, um, and at, at the end of the day, when when I look at it, you know, the work that I did that I felt the most 
you know, rewarded for I, is the is the work that I didn't get rewarded for financially. Yeah, um, exactly. And, right. It's 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 an odd. Exactly. And so then you 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 ask yourself, well, man, how can I, how can I? Because when we start to make this shift, the rest of the world hasn't made this shift yet either, right? Mm -hmm. Where most most money is spent upon the symptoms to resolve <laughs> pain and suffering than it is on growth. Um, and and mm -hmm. it's it's embarrassing when we actually sit down in our own resources and we look and we say, man, how much how much of my time, energy, and effort do I spend on my growth? And if you calculate it all out and sit down, it's it's embarrassing, especially if you work an eight to five job that less than five to ten percent of your resources are actually spent on anything that would move you forward that has motion to it. Instead, it's this loop of I've just got to cover all the bills and so right. there's no room left for growth. It, it happens in the business world too when the economy gets tough everyone's like um, uh, uh, squeezes their advertising budgets right instead of advertising more they advertise less and then they wonder why they have less revenue it's it's this bizarre way that we that we think in reverse we want to spend our money on solving problems instead of spending our money on creating solutions well, I, th I think it I think it has a lot to do with like maybe the ego and um, you know I mean if you think about a lot of people and, and their relationship to the things that they have in their life a lot of people are trying to figure out ways to like hold on to them like they want to keep them and they and they need like they're like they're desperate to have those things what I tend to notice is that the more that you let that go and you let things maybe move through you like you know uh, for example, you know, a, uh, a couple, like a month and a half ago, I had a motorcycle, um, and someone stole it, and you know, I it it was, but in stealing that motorcycle, and now I have no transportation, it gave me a new way to look at the world, and now I have um, more space for something else to come in, and if I can let, th if I can just let those things go and look for new opportunities, it's mm -hmm. easier to make that transition and go forward as opposed to. Me focusing all of my energy on, oh my gosh, my motorcycle's gone. I've got to make sure I find that back. I need that. I need it. I need it. I need it. I need it. Mm -hmm. And then like I get, I get worked up and I get stressed, and it's like it's no good for anything, and I'm not doing anything productive. Right. You're not clinging right. to the old energy. You're focusing and creating a space for new stuff, better opportunities to come. That's a very healthy perspective. Pain, but we are